Hello, everybody. We are having devotional in a different direction today. I won't be able to be with you live on Facebook, and we want to have devotional. We really feel called to prayer, especially this week. There are just a number of folks in and through our fellowship that we can see God at work in their life. We know that they're in some tragedy and difficulty, and we're just carrying those burdens. We really want to pray for them. So we're um, asking everyone to use the group me. If you're not part of our prayer group me, we wish that you would join it. Just message any of us and we can get you added. And we uh, want to use our bulletin, which is posted there and has a current list of prayer needs on it. And we ask that you would, as you pray, do what we do. Call each name on that list and just remember them by name before God's throne, that great throne of grace and mercy with grace abounding in our time of need. We're going to take a look here at the Gospel of Luke, chapter 18, beginning verse 1. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. There was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. But afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she won't beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? So we have so many things we could talk about, and we've looked at this parable and have loved it, and it's so encouraging in prayer. Really think about Jesus, thinking about us not believing God will answer a prayer and sort of gently chiding us there. We have um, a command from Jesus and two questions, and we have Luke telling us why Jesus has given us this, this sermon. So first, it's to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. And I, I think that points to a kind of faith. It's not just being discouraged and stopping praying, but also I want to have a deeper faith as I pray, really trusting the character of God that um, I find sometimes I'll pray and think I'm really quite sincere and then something positive happens and, I'm, and I get all excited about it. Yes, God is at work. And really God was at work all along whether I saw anything happen or not. It's really what I want to get to is a place of confidence in the knowledge of the of the character of God and of what the scripture says about a particular issue so that I can know I am praying the will of God. And I want to add to that something I say all the time, which is he cares for you. How will he not who freely gave us his own son, not also along with him, freely give us all things? He has proven to you and me in giving us Jesus that he has us in his heart and mind, that we are part of his actions in the earth. And it is his desire to move us to prayer, to, to use us in prayer, to hear us when we pray. This is God's holy program of world domination, and we are a part of it. So bringing people to him in prayer is what we're called on to do. This is an example of intercession in a way. This woman is actually really bringing her own issue. This is her problem with her adversary. Well, we all have an adversary. His name is Satan. It's what Satan means in Hebrew. He is our enemy. So whether it is a problem in the flesh or of, of another person or an event that's happened or a sickness or whatever it is, these are things that are adversarial to us. And I don't mean to spiritualize. Jesus is making a clear parable. We don't need to spiritualize it. But the, the concept applies, right? Everything that I might come and pray about almost can be an adversary, whether it's the will to, to live the way I mean, God wants me to live, to find repentance, whether it's the um, desire to read the scripture more, or whether it's, you know, I'm facing a terrible diagnosis and my heart's broken and I don't know what to do, or I've wronged someone or they've wronged me and I can't find forgiveness in my heart. You know, whatever somebody's after me to seek out my life, there can be huge things, but all of them are the kinds of things that are adversarial to us. And so this woman comes to a judge who doesn't care. You know, a few years ago, LSU had a, a player 
uh, Teron Matthew, who's now in the pros, but as a college player, his fellow athletes on the team made a T-shirt. They nicknamed him the Honey Badger and because the Honey Badger doesn't care about anything anybody else does around it. And they said, Honey Badger don't care. Right? Well, that's how this judge is. The judge don't care. He's so self-possessed that no opinion of people and not the mind of God can bother him at all. He does exactly as he pleases, which is a good way to be if you're a righteous person. But Jesus, you know, because you're doing what you think God wants, but and you're not moved by public opinion. But Jesus says this guy is an unrighteous judge. He's corrupt. All he cares about is himself. <clears throat> well, the woman bothers him to such a point that out of self-preservation, he chooses to answer the prayer. And so that's the first command Jesus gives us. Uh, he says, and the Lord said in verse 6, Hear what the unrighteous judge says. What does the unrighteous judge say? Well, he says, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, so he knows himself quite well, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. It's really kind of a funny story that Jesus is telling. Hear what the unrighteous judge says. Though I do not care about God, I do not care about people, ostensibly I don't care about this woman and her complaint. I do care about myself, and I will answer her request and not halfway. I will give her justice out of self-preservation. Next, Jesus then asks a question. And the Lord said, hear what the unrighteous judge says, verse 7, And will not God give justice to his elect, who cry to him day and night? Will he delay over them? So there are two questions there. And they're rhetorical questions, meaning Jesus knows the answer, and he expects the audience knows the answer too. Like in the cartoons, if they say, are we men or are we mice? We're supposed to know the answer to that question. Jesus is asking his audience, so you've heard what the unrighteous judge says. Is the unrighteous judge oddly similar to the way we have imagined God in our mind when we go to pray? Is the unrighteous judge the way we think of God, that God is unconcerned about what's right or what's right in a given circumstance? And I know none of us would say that. We'd all say God is righteous and always wants to do good. But in our mind, in our circumstance, with our person, with our problem, with our disqualifications, because we think we're not good enough to come to God or whatever the reason, is it that this unrighteous judge is strangely similar to the way we imagine God when we come in prayer. Jesus is not down on you for that or me. He chides us gently as a good teacher should and says, well, if he is, even this unrighteous judge knows how to bring justice. And then by contrast, verse 7, and will not God give justice to his elect? So are we going to find ourselves saying, I don't think God will do it for me because I don't deserve it or I don't qualify or I'm not a good disciple or whatever my reason is. That's not the nature of God. God isn't dependent on you or me and our qualifications and our ability to figure things out or even to do what's right. The main qualification in prayer from the Lord's Prayer and from what Peter says appears to be forgiveness. That if we for, do not forgive, our prayers can be hindered that it's needful that we forgive. So I want to challenge you and encourage you to follow the Lord's prayer, his example or model prayer. Forgive us our transgressions as we forgive those who transgress against us. Forgive us our debts, right? As we forgive our debtors or however you've learned that prayer and really think about any unforgiveness that you might have in your heart and release those people from the debt that you feel they owe you. And then be clean to pray and trust that our Lord is much gooder and much greater than the unrighteous judge and will not God give justice to his elect his chosen his special ones those of us whom he has found and made his and I want to say this is a prayer for us to pray for anyone that I if I come to know the heart and will and mind of God better I can pray with confidence. I can find his scripture that proves it and lines up with it. And I can pray with confidence against my adversary, which is doubt, the world system, and 
our enemy Satan and other people and whatever, and I, my emotional state. And I can come with confidence that no matter how I feel or what I think or what I've done or what I haven't done or who's against me or what the situation, I can come with confidence that this is the mind, the heart, the will, the desire of God, and his scripture proves it. And I'm going to hold that out. So I can pray that way for a person who's lost, who seems to have no hope of being saved. I can pray that way for a hopeless circumstance. And I can have confidence that whether God does what and when and how I want is not my, I have no authority over that. It's just, it's like this woman is helpless in front of this unrighteous judge. She can't do anything about that, but she can go continually and bring her request. And that's what we are called upon to do. And will he delay long over them? I think most of us would say yes, <laughs> because sometimes it seems like it takes a long time and we don't get the answers that we want. Or we don't get it the way that we want. But take comfort from heaven's perspective. God's answers are swift and quite timely. He is never late. He is always on time. And there's a lesson for us, isn't there, when we're impatient and crying and think we know better than God. There's a place of humility where we recognize that God's justice is swift and our understanding is weak and we must depend upon him completely and are helpless except for him. And so it is all humility to learn to trust God and not expect him to be on my timer and not make commands and demands that I have no right nor authority nor qualification to make. But all my requests can be right and with qualification and with authority when they are the mind and heart of God and they are proven by scripture. And that includes knowing that he loves me, that he freely gave me a son, and along with him will freely give me all things, that his favor's on me, his grace makes up for my lack, his personhood is in tune with what matters to me, little old foolish me, in my life. And I can help prove that by the last verse. Question Jesus asks, I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. So Jesus answers his own question. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And that's the question to us, isn't it? So we think God is unjust and distant and unconcerned, and we find it difficult to pray, even if we think we're, you know, so we're going through the motions of praying because we know it's right, but we don't really trust in the character and the loving kindness and the attention and the presence of God. And so Jesus chides us, pokes us a little bit and says, when I come back, will people still be believing? You know, it's humankind that falls short on our promises and obligations, never him. I love you all. I hope this is an encouraging word and that we all come and pray together. And I pray for us now. Father, how good you are. Hear our prayers. We bring you these whom you've laid upon our hearts because you're the one who taught us to love, loving us first. Thank you, God, for this privilege and this way in life. We honor you now and ask you to lead us as we pray for each of these. Amen. Love you all.